When you think of a wrestling move that every current wrestler has attempted at some point, the DDT immediately comes to mind. It's quick, yet effective, and this has led to so many different variations of the move being established in the ring. Watch any promotion today and you're bound to see some form of a DDT being hit. But the move has evolved a lot since it was first used, all the way back in the 1970s, with Mexican wrestler Black Gordman being its innovator. But it would be Jake the Snake Roberts who eventually popularized the maneuver in North America, starting in 1984 in Mid-South Wrestling. Jake's use of the DDT came from a complete accident, as Jake's foot was stepped on by his opponent whilst in a match, leading to both wrestlers falling down to the mat. I couldn't move my legs, so we, we lost balance. And he stepped on my foot, and we went down. What a huge pop. Though. Oh my God, Come man. And he was smart enough to stay there. I turned him over and covered him, barely kicked out, but the people were talking about that move. The name DDT was created after Jake learned the news that the pesticide of the same name had been outlawed due to its dangers. The DDT is like a name that long of some poison the farmers were using on the crops. It was getting into the bloodstreams and into our food chain, and that's where I stole that from. No. Right hand up. Oh, look at that! DDT! Even from its first use, the quick release and snap made the move look so devastating as the opponent would be driven head first into the mat. Jake the Snake would establish the DDT as one of the great finishing moves of the 80s and early 90s. He would pride himself on how effective the maneuver was in keeping opponents down. Look out! Action on the outside, action on the inside! And it was this effectiveness that led to other wrestlers adopting the DDT into their moveset. These included Arn Anderson, who made sure to emphasize the fast snap element of the move whenever he hit it. I tried to explode into my version of it. I wasn't stealing. I was actually paying homage to something that I saw that looked like a kill shot. Mick Foley would make the move his own by double hooking the opponent's arms to execute what would be the double arm DDT. A variant of the move that today is still a signature maneuver with the likes of Drew McIntyre's Future Shock and John Moxley's Paradigm Shift. In the mid to late 90s, the DDT would be a move used by a number of wrestlers in ECW, with the likes of Tommy Dreamer and Raven using it as their finisher. As time went on, more variations were created, such as the Reverse DDT, Tornado DDT and Cradle DDT, also being regularly hit throughout wrestling. The most famous of these was a version of the reverse CDT executed by Sting called the Scorpion Death Drop. Sting introduced the move in 1996 and used it to win a number of titles, including the WCW World title against DDP on Nitro, which received a huge pop. However, the more versions of the DDT that would be created, the more watered down the original move would become. And what was once one of the most devastating maneuvers in wrestling was now becoming a setup move. This continued into the 2000s as wrestlers continued to find more creative ways to hit the move, thus rendering the basic version of the DDT less and less effective. Even wrestlers who once used a modified version of the traditional DDT as their finisher, such as Edge, would instead begin using the spear to finish matches. By the mid-2000s, the basic DDT would no longer be considered a finishing move, bar a select few who still used it as their finisher. The traditional DDT was now on par with the suplex and neckbreaker in terms of being a transition move or something a wrestler might use for a near fall in their match. Nevertheless, some superstars have still managed to make it look devastating with their selling of the move. In particular, the likes of RVD and Neville. Top rope! Oh! Tornado DDT! Out. The DDT is a move that wrestlers continue to reinvent to this day, but it's still always cool to see someone bust out the original even though it's not used to finish a match anymore. And that doesn't bother its most famous user, Jake the Snake Roberts. People often ask me, so, well Jake don't you get mad at these guys that are using the DDT now for a false finish? I'm like no, I think it's great. Because all they're telling the people is, they're not half as good as I am, because if I did it you didn't get your ass up. Right. right. Over the past couple decades, we've seen countless innovations of the DDT over the years, such as Eddie Guerrero's Tornado DDT, Undertaker's Running DDT, Sami Zayn's Suicide Dive DDT, Rey Mysterio's Sliding DDT, and Randy Orton's Draping DDT. The there are only a handful of superstars in recent years who have actually used the variation of the DDT as their finisher, but the most impressive has to be Kalisto's Salida del Sol, which is an elaborate variation of the reverse DDT. Who can forget that time he hit it off the ladder? 
absolutely beautiful. The DDT will never die. It will always be a part of wrestling as wrestlers continue to find new and inventive ways to hit it. But let's not forget where it all began, from when Black Gordman first hit the move in Japan in the 70s to when Jake the Snake Roberts made it one of the most recognisable manoeuvres in the 80s and 90s. It was the original out of nowhere wrestling move and the legacy it has left is unmistaken. We continue with the first round. Wait a minute. Oh, no, nowhere. With DDT. And that brings us to the end of this video. As always, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Also, do check out our other videos in the series, such as the origin of the cutter or what's otherwise known as the RKO. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.